everyone. Welcome back. Everyone awake? Afternoon session. But this one you've got to definitely be awake for because we, are, we have brought to you a lovely artist all the way from Iran, <laughs> Shadi Gajirian. Uh, I'm going to give a quick introduction. Uh, born in Tehran in 1974, Gajirian studied photography in Ahmad University, Tehran, and has since exhibited extensively worldwide since 1999 in Europe uh, and many other spaces. Uh, her work is mainly concerned with the issues of contemporary Iranian female identity within the settings of tradition, the contrast between conservative roles attributed to women in society, and the impact of modernity as shown in both the Qajar series uh, and Domestic Life 2002. Her, photo her photographs are to be found in s several public collections such as the British Museum London, the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. She lives and works in Tehran. I'm going to now welcome Shadi to come and join us. studied art I thought it's easy um, and then I, I thought that uh, so I choose photography because it's more easy it's just I push the bottom and finish everything happened but I was wrong um, I started to, uh, to study photography and during the, that time I um, used to work in the Museum of Photography in Tehran my job was to um, print the old glasses of uh, photos there. And uh, also I should tell you that I was in love with documentary photography. I wanted to do it, but I couldn't. When something happened in front of me, everything starts to come to my mind that do I ha have, the, should I have um, permission to take photos from him or his or, um, because I believe that they have some rights to decide that if they want to be in, in front of my camera. And then the, I uh, actually I decided that at the end that I should take a photos from somebody or not, the happening that was in front of me was disappeared and I couldn't uh, do it. So soon I realized that I'm not a good documentary photographer, unfortunately. And I decided um, to renew everything in my studio the things that come to my mind, the subject that mostly they were social subjects. So imagine that I was working in the Museum of Photography and I was thinking about uh, that I could not do the documentary photography. Uh, I should have my thesis. Um, and I done this series, the Qajar series. Uh, Qajar is the name of a dynasty in uh, Iran. We had 180 years ago that all the modernism came to country that time. And um, also I um, decided to um, talk about that period because photography came that time too. And we were lucky because um, our king, Nasser bin Shah, um, went to Paris that time. He was in love with photography there. He brought a camera, he brought um, it himself, and he has started to um, took photos from 400, 500 wives that he had in her, his, his harem. And uh, we are lucky because we have a big archive of the uh, photography of women that time. And when I was working in the museum, I was in love with these photos, uh, women with that custom 
costumes they posed for their uh, their husbands and um, many many of them was just stare at the camera like this I decided to renew everything exactly like them in my studio but um, add something modern in the photo I wanted to show that today I uh, shoot these photos. I believe that my generation in Iran are the same, exactly these photos. We combine past and present. We often go to the present past time. We have something of our tradition and also we are accepted there to modernism that came to the country. We nicely combine these two issues. So I decided to uh, have this topic for my thesis. At first, the university said, no, you should go and do some documentary photos. It's not that serious, it's like a play. But after a while, they said, okay, you can do this. And I started seriously. I go to the archive of television and borrowed the dresses from them. I asked my sister, she's my sister. My sisters, my friends, my cousins to come and uh, pose for me. And Finish. I finished this series. At, at that time, I didn't know that I'm doing a staged photography. I've never heard about it. I just do it naturally because I couldn't go outside and uh, take photos. I decided to bring outside in my atelier. And um, but after years, when I traveled to London, I discovered that it's a genre, genre in photography. That 10 years before that time, it was started in Europe. So um, I was lucky because I could exhibit them in a gallery in Tehran and that time uh, somebody from um, London bought one of my photos and um, for her, his, her boyfriend and um, she was a teacher in a university in London. She invited me there to exhibit my work. Suddenly all the opens the doors was open for me and uh, I exhibit them a lot all over the world in Viennals, in galleries, in museums. And um, it was good that time, but that, uh, it was also um, not very good because a big things happened for me in with my first series. Everybody that time told me, that, okay, what do you want to do after that? And I was afraid, I, I didn't know, okay, I should continue working, but it was so hard because I was in a good museums everywhere with the first series and I should continue. Um, anyway, I, uh, for two years, I didn't do anything after that time, but soon I could, um, I could finish thinking about that what will happen to me and uh, I think I should start another work. And I've done my second series. Mm, the title of this series is Light Every Day. It was the time that I was married. Um, as soon as when um, I talked with my mother about my marriage, because I wanted to marry with my boyfriend, he was photographer too, and everything was okay, but my mother soon uh, started to put my diary together, by these things for me. And after that, we were married, we go to the new house, all our friends and family again, they came to our house and bring one of these things as a present of our uh, marriage again. <laughs> and um, it was a big question mark for me, okay, but, what will happen then? Uh, should I use all of these things? And the answer was yes. Until now, every day, I use these things. Not just me. Uh, I believe that um, all the women all over the world, they have some responsibility of these things every day. That's why I put the title like every day. They repeat and repeat some things everywhere. The good husband are always just help the uh, why? Um, and um, this is the um, woman that she's always worried that what the what her uh, children should eat for dinner. For example, when I'm I'm here now, 
I'm talking about my photography, but before I came here, I just called my mom and asked her that if my baby is okay, everything is okay, uh, what uh, she should eat, and these things. So, um, yes, I use all of these things that uh, my mother and my friend give me until now. After this series, the reaction of the people was totally different. Mostly men didn't like these photos. Um, but women like them. Most of the feminism NGOs um, use them as their banner, their poster, everything. But men, no. They said that um, it seems that you take photos from our eyes. You wanted to say that we look to the women like this. It, it was it was the first time in my life that I've said that men are worried about the situation of the women. They've never done it before, no way. But through this series, and I had many problems to show them uh, in Iran, you know, I'm living in Iran, uh, and uh, my first exhibition always was in Iran until now, and then abroad in other countries. And the government uh, several times asked me to come and and uh, they asked me questions, why you want to show this, uh, this uh, point of view of the women to the world? You shouldn't do it. And yes. After this series, I've done control alt delete. This is the work that I'm showing now here in government fine art uh, in the museum. Um, you know, soon I realized that I want to tell my stories through my photos. I believe that my photos now is like a mirror of my life. Everything that happened in my life comes to my photos too. So, and I. Um, at that time, I consider myself not just a photographer, also a storyteller. Um, and I believe that the story that happened to me uh, belongs to my generation, especially in Iran. Um, for example, this series was the time that I was pregnant, and uh, in 2006. Everybody told me, don't sit in front of the computer. Don't use the your cell phone, it's not good for your, you and your baby, you should mm, just omit these things from your life. It was impossible for me. All my exhibition all over the world was through the email and computer. Uh, and so um, I didn't accept this. Actually, I just sit in front of the computer and make this series. And um, I realized that our life are computerized. Um, we prefer to chat through the computer instead of to sit in a sofa and have a tea and talk to each other. We, buy, uh, we shop online instead of to walking in the street and go to the shops. And uh, sometimes it is good, but uh, sometimes not. I've done this series in 2006. Nowadays it's worse, I think with these social medias and everything that we have here. I myself, I, all the time, I'm with my cell phone, checking my Instagram, everything, Facebook, just answer the questions, just like my friends, everything. We, unfortunately, we couldn't do anything for this. Let's see what happened. Maybe in future something changed. And uh, I think it was around 2008, I, I'm not sure, I've done this series. The title is West by East. It was the time that um, some people from Barcelona came to Tehran and they asked me to do uh, a series uh, with the title of How Eastern Look at Western People. They wanted to arrange a big exhibition and they asked the artists from all over the world to do something with this topic. And it was the time that I was so busy with the exhibitions in the museum, galleries all over the world, and all the time they sent me the catalogs, magazines, if 
I, I were there. And through the post, when the books and magazine came to Tehran, in the post office, they opened the uh, packages and they censored the part of the women that we shouldn't see and are not allowed in Islam. And um, it was, okay, imagine that uh, all the time I went to the post office to have my package. It was someone else in front of me. He opened the package, he started to censor with the magic all the parts of the women's body. And I started to have a conversation with him. Okay, don't do that, it's, it's, it's okay. But no, he should censor it. And I decided to have this proposal for that exhibition. It was the way that we were looking at to the Western women. And nowadays, it's still they've done it. And um, in the television, if we see some movies, they censor again some part of the women. Um, so I again ask my sisters, my friends, to come to my atelier. The, it, it's a windows between me and the model. They pose for me and I brush uh, black paint on the parts that we shouldn't see. And just eyes. It's me. <laughs> okay. The other series is uh, Nil Nil. Nil Nil. You know what's the meaning of Nil Nil? Nil Nil uh, is the uh, that when the in the football match no, match no, but no none of the teams won. When they are zero zero, we said Nil Nil. Okay. <clears throat> I had the topic of uh, war in my mind. I was um, six years old when the Iran-Iraq war happened, and I was 14 years old when it finished. You can't imagine that what happened that year. Um, I can easily close my eyes and uh, hear the sounds of bombing. I was six years old. At first, the uh, war was far from home. It was just in the border. I live in the capital, Tehran. But little by little, it comes closer. And at least Tehran was bombing. Um, I remember that uh, in the, I think in the years that uh, before war ended, it was one bomb in Tehran every day. Every day was one bomb in Tehran. And imagine, we were a family with five uh, mother, father, and three children. We were to the different schools. My father goes to the job. My mom stay at home. And we were in some, some places in the city, you know, separately. And one bomb will come, should come that day. And uh, when I had a, a baby uh, recently, I asked my mother, why you should send me to a school? Maybe bomb came to my school and you were at home. How, how you do it? And she said, Okay, war, war was uh, happening and we should continue our uh, life. We should continue our life during the war. It was the sentences that made me to do this series. Okay, war is uh, going on and people should continue living. Um, then we are talking about uh, war photography. We always saw the photos of war that men goes to the border and and take photos from the men that fighting. Nobody asked that what will happen to a woman that she's in the home and she's waiting. It's terrible. And I, um, although it, there is not a woman physically in the photos, but it seems just two seconds before I push the bottom of camera, the woman goes outside from the frame. You can see that how, how um, uh, women is, is in these photos. And I started to, again, renew everything, um, all in my studio. 
I use some symbol of war and you can see a normal life next to each other. Actually, it started from this photo for me. Um, it was the time that uh, I was thinking of, okay, we have a general war that happened for everybody, and then inside a home, we have again some fight between the people who are living in the house. And after that, we always have a fight in, inside ourselves, I think. I was doing um, nil nil series. I should go to the people who were in war to borrow some things from them, like the things that you've seen in my photos. And I realized that all of them, all the people that were in the war, they kept something from the war. And they kept them as a holy things. They put it in a box, box in a drawer. And they, all of them told me, please bring these things back for us because we want to keep them as a memory. So I decided to do this series. The title is White Square. I just put these icons of war with a red ribbon. Um, I, I believe that all the soldiers have one of, the, one of these things as a present of war or something like this. of photographs that, that I've done um, are this series. The title is Miss Butterfly. It was the time that an um, election happened in Iran, and the result was something that people were not accept, accept, acceptable, <laughs> the result. And um, uh, they go out, they do the demonstration, and the uh, streets was, was uh, full of people. But I was at home again because I had a little baby and I told you I was not good to go outside and take photos from them. Um, I decided to do something about this issue but show myself. Um, I was photographer, my husband was photographer that time. All our friends uh, were photographer and journalists and most of them were arrested or they, uh, they um, escaped the country forever, unfortunately. And I was so afraid. I, I had a little baby. I should stay at home. The only things that I could do was to just send the photos outside, the photos that my friends take from the streets. And so I was worried. Uh, I was worried that maybe they came to our house and arrest us, me and my husband. Because it was like this, the government suddenly came to the houses and arrested people. And I remember that it was um, days that we stay at home and close all the doors and windows and don't turn on the lights to um, show that we are not at home. And it was like a prison, actually, for us. Okay, this is the story that's happening around, around me, and also um, at the same time, um, I um, started to listen to the very old piece, Iranian one, the, um, the name of the piece was Miss Butterfly, with my little daughter, again, after 20, 25 years. And the story was very nice. 
uh, it was a, an old story, but it seems that it's telling our, our um, uh, today a story too. It was a, about the story was about a butterfly that goes to the spider web, and um, she was very very beautiful. She, uh, she asked uh, the spider that please don't eat me. I have a appointment. I have a rendezvous with sun, with light. A spider told her that okay, I will not eat you, but you, you go downstairs. There is many insects there. Bring me some food, and then I will let you to go. The butterfly go downstairs, and uh, during her journey to the downstairs, uh, he saw many insects with the different stories. They were poor. They, were, they they didn't have anything to eat and to do. After a while, she came uh, again to the spider and said, "Okay, eat me. I couldn't find anything for you." And the spider told her that, "Okay, I saw you." You were so nice. You miss your beauty during the way. I will let you go. And then um, butterfly asked a spider, "Can I um, ask my friends, other insects, to come with me?" He said yes. And she started to ask them to come, come. We can go out. We can go and have the, our appointment with the light. But nobody comes. They uh, used to be there. They wanted to stay in the darkness and uh, continue their life. It was just a butterfly that go outside. So when I heard this story, and I was in that days, I started to combine again two things. Put the spider web uh, in front of the, all the windows and doors that you can see the lights. And um, it's like that is um, butterfly is a spider herself. There is no spider here. This is the butterfly that woke this spider for herself. It was like me that I I was inside home and I closed all the windows and doors to mm, don't let the insects come to my house and arrest or something. But don't worry, at, la at least it didn't happen anything for me. And um, these days passed. The last one. Um, the last uh, photos that I've done is this one. Actually, it's a part of a video, video installation that I've done. Unfortunately, I couldn't do the video installation. I couldn't show you the video, but I can explain it for you. Imagine in the gallery there is a four wall uh, square room and you as a viewer will go inside in the room and see from the in front wall that many many people come to you. In this wall you can see the beside face of that the same people and in the back wall this is the back of the people. It means that when you are going inside the room you feel that you are surrounded with the people who just come and cross you. You don't know where they come from and where they want to go. You just feel that, okay, you are between them. And the notice, the door of entrance and exit is the same. At least when you want to get rid of this room, you should be with them. You should follow them to go outside. I put the title, uh, Too Loud the Solitude, to this. And um, it was, it's for three or four years ago. It was the time that I feel so lonely in my life. Um, and I wanted to talk about the loneliness. I believe that we, although we have a social media, as many, many friends we have, mm, we are crowded with friends and uh, but at least I, I believe that the human are going to be more lonely and lonely, at least. So this is the last uh, photos that I've done. I want to finish now my talk. And uh, just want to tell you that uh, after these years, it's now 25 years that I'm doing photography. And I started to just focus on women's issue. Mm, and show different um, 
point of view of the life of a woman in Iran, but it's so hard. Iran is a big country, with, uh, different cities with different kind of people. It's just a corner of it that I just, as an artist, feel it, and I wanted to share with the other people. And it's very hard. No, but now I, I, mm, I'm not a feminist anymore. I believe in a human right. I. Uh, now, after now, if I do something, I prefer to talk about the human's rights. Thank you for listening to me. Can't you take uh, citizenship outside and uh, make uh, make your creative photography or whatever you want? No? We also seen a film where in a football match one girl enters with a man's dress. It's a very very famous Iranian film. Yeah. And what happens? Okay. Yeah. So even now they don't allow you to attend a football match. You know? Women are not allowed. But uh, after one month, we stay in the behind the doors, and <laughs> maybe something happened. But no, still, they are not allowed to go. But one of the major Iranian director's daughter is making very revolutionary films. No? Mm. Father is a director, mother is a director, daughter is a director. He is doing very very revolutionary films, which is against the country, you know. But how is she surviving? How is she surviving? She is against the Iranian government. No, actually, she is a rebel. I don't know about her actually. I just heard about it and see the films, but I don't know how, what will happen for her. I don't but know. you must take different citizenship and take, make very good photographs. <laughs> yeah. Yes, anyone? Thank you for that wonderful talk. Um, do you have other um, women photographers who get inspired from your work and uh, reach out to you and uh, start doing work that is similar to this? Do you have? Actually, uh, yes, because before me there were no art photography. You know, we had a um, war, before that we had the revolution. Mostly um, we had a documentary and journalistic photos. But uh, with my generation, art photography starts, and also the galleries start. Uh, after me, we have many, many photographers that uh, started to do stage photography. Because uh, time by time, it's very hard to carry camera in Tehran street. Sometimes uh, they arrest you. Nowadays, it's better, but uh, mostly um, artists would prefer to renew everything in the atelier. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now we have many, many photographers <laughs> doing art photography. Uh, Shadi, actually, uh, I've been to Iran, as you know, uh, when we met in 2008, and I found Iran really uh, fascinating. Uh, can you uh, 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 let me say something? Uh, okay. Pashma came to my studio and uh, she uh, has a photos with the old dresses, like my Gajar series. <laughs> I shoot a photo from her with exactly the old style. <laughs> <laughs> that is very generous of me. <laughs> no, I just want to give another picture of Iran because I found uh, it very lively intellectually. And uh, lots of things were happening and uh, um, I, you know, someone from the uh, comments just now, it seems as if like, uh, can you talk something about the intellectual scene in Iran and the and the institutions? For example, I've been to the university canteen, a uh, very lively university and uh, very lively kind of uh, culture with all these restrictions. Um, there's a lot of uh, things going on and uh, in terms of education or uh, 
And then the art scene as well, mm -hmm. uh, unlike many other countries, actually it starts from the, uh, in fact I found a lot of similarity between India and uh, Iran in the mm -hmm. sense that uh, from the late 19th century actually uh, modernism, uh, modern art and photography came to mm -hmm. Iran and there's a history of it. So there's a very strong sort of uh, 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 fine art and uh, a photography history over there, modern photography and fine art. Uh, history over there. So can you just talk about that context? Yes, of course. Um, well, actually when war was finished, and um, especially I'm talking about the photography, and uh, then photographers started to do art photography, many, many galleries started to be open. Now, in, uh, when I started my work, it was just four or five galleries in Tehran. Now, it's something like 150 galleries in Tehran. And it's some, uh, I think 10 of them, they are working especially in photography. They just show photography. And they participate in Paris Photo in everywhere. And uh, we have also a very good collection in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Tehran. Yes, it's so active. It's like a new fashion, actually, that um, people uh, renewed the old houses. They um, made it as a gallery, cafe, bookshop, and these things. And uh, they want to have the cultural part of Tehran as an architecture to make it as a gallery. No, yeah, it's changed a lot during these 10 years. And we are lucky, of course. And um, also, we have a very good publishing for magazines and books. Uh, I didn't want you to show you just the bad things about Iran, of course. Um, the example is that I'm here. I began travel. When I came here, everybody asked me, should you cover your hair? <laughs> Actually, uh, everywhere that I travel is the same. The face of the women that you show from Iran is not right. Somebody like Pashkamala, the Scottish, and the other friends that were in Tehran, they can understand it, that people live there um, easily. I have enough freedom to live in Tehran, to show my works there, to show the, uh, my works in other countries worldwide, in different museums. Yes, today is better. <laughs> and I wish to have uh, better days in the future, too. Um, hi. Yes, sure. Sorry. Oh, okay. We'll, I'll pass it on to you for the next one. I actually just wanted to know your thoughts on this, what you were talking about when you said that initially the only imagery that one actually saw was purely of the war, which is also from a very um, biased perspective because it looks at one particular gender and its in interaction and engagement and existence in Iran itself. And I mean, I just wanted to know your thoughts on this when you say things, uh, when, you know, the kind of work that you're doing and the kind of work that maybe more contemporary photographers are also doing today. Uh, someone like Amar, whose book is, uh, you know, also here, or uh, Lawrence, who they're visiting, I mean, they, they're not allowed to come back to Iran anymore, you know, for the kind of work that they're doing, but even Nazade's work that's there. And the idea of, of the staged image and how that is kind of almost, has it helped in a way to be a release to be uh, for conversations that maybe might not have been possible uh, to discuss otherwise? Uh, you know, do you think that the introduction of art and photography and that mix allows for that conversation? We choose this. Somebody like me and Ozade and the other photographer choose this kind of photography. But um, for example, we have a very famous photographer, Neil Shah. Yeah. Um, she's uh, working for agencies. She's a journalist and she do a lot. And she uh, still live in Iran. You know, I think that um, living in Iran is a choose that we choose there I, I love my country I, I I've never I traveled a lot I had many many opportunities to go other countries in a good way but uh, I wanted to be there this is the things that artists choose like me Nusha Azadeh the other that um, one that they choose to live in other country I think that there is not very serious things happen for them if they come back and for me, it's very important. When you want to talk about the country, you should be inside it. You should live inside it. You should feel it. 
You cannot go and sit in somewhere else and talk about the other people right now. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Shan. Um, I have a very different image of Iran, and I'm going to explain you why. Uh, I grew up in Germany, like you know, and I grew up with lots of friends who are children, like myself, of parents who migrated in the 70s to Germany, and they don't have such a nice story about Iran like you're sharing it today. Um, so one of my best friends, he um, is of course a dual passport holder because you're not allowed to have the Iranian citizenship, and um, he's still not very free to go, though he was born in Germany because he said like any time he could like get into the military. And um, when I share stories like this, I mean, I'm getting your story, and because I feel sometimes that, so these are like um, parents, like my parents from that generation who left Iran in the revolution, and um, they love their country, and they're living in exile, and they have that um, sadness which they're carrying around with themselves and which they're not getting kind of rid of. And um, I'm always interested in seeing like, you know, that image what you're telling now that you're actually very free and you're not you're not talking about this kind of stereotype what we have about Iran. Um, it's just that I wanted to share the way I kind of grew up and the stories I have of uh, Iran and that is lots of sadness and lots of longing towards the country that they have lost and that they're not so free to go back and it's wonderful like how like I understand um, that lots of energy which comes from Iran and, and like this like um, photographers or, or artists is because of individual kind of strength. And um, I thought about how you do sometimes openings and how constricted sometimes you are and I think please continue with it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I like what you what you say that you're not a, a feminist or uh, artist anymore. You're more like a human rights yeah? uh, artist. I think it's in the, um, after listening to your story and after listening to I mean, our friend behind, I think it's important that in the uh, in the art world or in even in the cinema world, they talk, they tend to put let me stereotype certain country like probably Iran, for example, that uh, certain story that have to be told and never change, the narrative never change, and the story structure never change, and listen from you and then a way how you change as well, which mean that. Thing never just stand, uh, stand still. Everything evolved. Which means that listening from you, Iran, having hope that better future is coming, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then you even yourself changing from like mm -hmm. you know fighting okay. for women, and now you're torn down about about that. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> this is where I think this is important, and as you say that. You have to be there if you want to say anything about it. Yeah. I think this is exactly that what I, I believe. I, I'm glad to hear from you that you believe that too. Thank you. We speak so often, so often of uh, art uh, pushing the boundaries, etc. And um, about Iran in '79, the revolutionary situation. Do, do you know uh, Nevat Karmani, who lives in Germany? Uh, Nevat Karmani? Um, Karmani? No. Well, anyway, he's a very. <laughs> <laughs> he told about '79 uh, when the, the nights of poetry, etc. Uh, more and more people were gathering, and there was a revolutionary moment where poetry, which has this fantastic tradition in Iran, was really kind of going with the revolution, whatever came out of the revolution afterwards. Do you think that maybe art, photography, uh, could play a certain
certain role like that today? Maybe no more revolutionary, but evolutionary or whatever? Exactly. It was the thing that I wanted to talk about, the, but I forgot it. <laughs> um, you know, the things that happened in Iran during revolution and then during the war, all the people who they were photographer or they were not photographer, they carry their camera and go outside and document the, the things that happened. We were lucky. It was very good. During the war, for example, many, many photographers appear, you know. They were not photographers before. They just, they just wanted to fight, go to the borders and fight, but they used the camera to just record it. And, you know, when uh, the war, not in the revolution, but when the war happened in Iran, Iran was a boycott from the news. None of the journalists from outside couldn't allowed to come and record it. So it was just the um, people from inside Iran who started to be a photographer, who started to be a journalist from that time. So it's a big movement after that. Yes, of course we have. Um, also, uh, um, I can talk about uh, like art, not just photography. They changed the way that the artist wanted to talk and tell their stories, of course. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session. So, the question is, uh, like, when it comes to Iran, many filmmakers such as uh, Asghar Farhadi and Jafar Farhadi, their uh, films, they are uh, celebrated by the world, but when it comes to the Iranian government, they don't give them much recognition because like, their works are critical of the Iranian society and all. And even in one of your interviews, you mentioned that uh, a photo in the Qajar series, whereas in uh, Women Wearing Hijab, she was looking to the mirror and uh, with showcase banned books. The government, didn't, you told that the government didn't feel, found, find it too appealing. So do you, have you ever thought that at any point that uh, the government is not giving due recognition for you uh, and uh, the other Iranian artists? Um, you know the things that me and some other artists know, we, um, we know there is a censorship there. But all of us know the red lines. We know that how should we work and show in Iran. We know that we should not cross the red lines. For example, in my different series that you've seen, there is not a hijab like this that we always use it in Iran. It's in some way, for example, in control art release, the hijab of the woman is being in darkness. You know, so I try to um, send my message to a way that I can do it. You know, I I think that sometimes censorship made artists more deeply about the subject that they want to work. Yes, we know the red lines and all of us. If somebody wants to leave the country, they can do anything and then go outside. But for us that we are living inside, we know. Thanks for your session. And I like to, but I love the country. And uh, it was great to have. And uh, just I want to know, uh, what, is your, what do you want to say for the newcomers, especially for the women in the photography? Sorry, what do you want what to say? What do you want to say for the newcomers in photography, and especially for women? Uh, you are talking about my future project or this one? No, it's for the uh, newcomers in photography. Uh, so what is your advice for your uh, tips for the uh, newcomers? <laughs> Okay, uh -huh, okay, what I suggested, okay. Um, uh, there is one thing that it works for me. It was, um, I don't try to um, a very big issues and things. I just notice to me, myself, and the things that happen around me. And um, I try to tell my own story. My own story is my generation story, actually. We are all the same. We have the same problems, we, we are uh, in, with, uh, struggle with the same issues. So if we go uh, uh, inside of uh, ourselves first and uh, know ourselves and then uh, talk about ourselves and our, um, around us, it would be better to 
don't go out and say the big things and big issues. I think the, everything for me started from the little things inside me. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. A uh, few words on your supreme leader and his role in, for the art uh, in Iran. Sorry, can you? A uh, few words on Supreme Leader, that is Rehber of Iran, and his role uh, for the art uh, of Iran. Right. Whose role? Sorry, I couldn't understand. The Supreme Leader, Khamenei. Supreme Leader. Ah, oh, Khamenei. Yeah. <laughs> Next time, exactly. Next time when I was in India, I had an interview with one of the magazines. When I came back to Iran, they take my passport and asked me to come and <laughs> ask some questions. And all the time, they showed me a magazine, Indian magazine, that did you say these things in India? <laughs> and uh, I remember that he uh, he was, um, you know, he couldn't. Um, Put the magazine like this, it was up, upside down. <laughs> and I couldn't understand which magazine it is. I think maybe the same things happened to me. But okay, our leader is a leader. Uh, I don't know him actually. I, we will never <laughs> see him. We just say he just says something and they write it in the newspaper and magazine. I think that um, he, he never say anything about art actually. <laughs> this is just the political things and actually I am not the ambassador of Iran now. Um, I'm an artist. I live in a, um, political issues of course because all the Iranians live in, under the political issues. Um, you actually are the same, all of us. Um, but. No, this is the Ministry of Culture that um, mm, decided about the things that happen in Iran, not the leader. Um, so, many of the greatest uh, filmmakers and big artists, many of them are refugees. You know? So when they went to the other countries, they became very famous. For example, like Polanski and all. For example, the German refugees, you know, Mr. Uh, uh, Helmut knows. The two documentary filmmakers, you know, so they came as refugees, you know, so they were in Bombay and they, you know, and they started making films in India. They also made a Hindi film in somewhere in 1941. One person, I forgot his name, he has made about 20, 25 documentary films and they are the, they made all, all, all films in India, all, all documentary films. At the time they were very famous. They didn't make it big. But what I'm telling is, uh, uh, many greatest uh, filmmakers and writers, you know, they left their country. I left my city 35 years back. I'm from Bangalore. I don't feel like going. I like being here. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Anyone else? Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shadi. I'm now going to welcome our beautiful Canadian artist, Angela Grohenholz, to come and present her work and tell us about her journey.